Well, hello there, and welcome back to another episode of Backyard to Table, where I'm today, I am going to plant some watermelon seeds. I went to Dollar Tree and I bought these watermelon seeds. They are sugar baby watermelon, and I'm gonna try them out. They're four four dollars, so for twenty five cents, how can you go wrong, right? So right here, I've got the tub that I used last year for sweet potatoes. As I first started my hand at sweet potatoes, and now sweet potatoes are on the other side of the yard, growing in a much bigger area with vines and all of that kind of stuff, but we'll get to that a little later. So come with me. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna remove the weeds that are visible here, and then I'm going to add some compost. Now, I use Timberline uh, compost. It's a cow manure and compost mix, and I've had very good success with it until I finally get my own compost growing and, and ready to go. This is what I'm gonna go ahead and use. So, let's get started. Put on gloves. It is already 81 degrees out here, the beginning of March. Now I know a lot of you are still experiencing frost and low temperatures and everything like that, but lately now we are moving into what I call the beginning of summer. And uh, so the temperatures have been like 70s at night and then back up to mid 80s during the daytime. So I'm going to get started now so that we don't fry trying to get this done today. I try to pull it out as close to the root as possible. And then once we start turning it all over with the compost and everything, hopefully that'll keep a lot of it from seeing the light of day and it won't grow back. But we'll see, one never knows. Everything is trial and error. I'm still learning. Hopefully you're still learning and enjoying and that's what keeps me coming back. All right, so we got the majority of the weeds out and now I'm gonna go ahead and add in the compost to reinvigorate the soil. Soil here in Florida is very sandy and it makes it really, really crumbly. I mean, that's the sand, okay? However, this didn't start out as sand. This started out as topsoil with compost mixed in and peat moss and this is what it's become a year later. So now from everything I've read, yeah, a little remnant of what would have been a sweet potato. From everything I've read, sweet potato, um, not sweet potato, Got sweet potato on the mind. Now, collard greens would grow nicely with this here. That's from the research that I looked up. However, the fact that the vines on a watermelon plant can grow up to 20 feet in length 
that doesn't give me a whole lot of space. And in addition, it needs full sun, like eight hours or more a day and lots of water. So that's why I'm going to stick it here in this tub because in this part of the yard, I can just let the vines overflow this tub and grow out over here to the right. I've got a little bit of sugar cane behind me here. I've got some banana trees over here is the okra bed, but I can kind of move things around as the vines grow out. So it'll be all right. And nobody cuts the yard except me. So there won't be anybody coming through with a wheat whacker and getting rid of all the vines that are growing. So. That's mixed up really well. You go ahead and put in the compost. Where's that knife? I went out and I bought this handy little bag that people use for tools at Home Depot. And it's coming very, very handy. It allows me to keep all of everything that I typically use here as I go through the garden on a day-to-day -day basis and kind of figure out what needs to be done, what needs to be pruned, what needs to be picked, all of that type of stuff. And it keeps me from having to go back and forth and back and forth to go and get tools and things like Velcro tape and string for vines and hooks for laying back down the weed carpet so all of that helps me out saves me some time all right so let's go ahead and get this open And I'm gonna go ahead and put in the whole entire thing. This is only one cubic feet. And for those of you who hate math, that's just one foot by one foot by one foot. So that's how much is there. And this should do me up pretty good. See, this is why people tend to grow stuff on their own. This is why I finally decided to go ahead and do my own compost because right in the middle, of this bag that's just supposed to be compost is a wire. Why there's a wire, I don't know. Maybe we'll write the manufacturer. So at any rate, you gotta just look out for these kinds of things. Sometimes I find bits of plastic and all of that type of stuff that's frankly not gonna help your garden at all. All right, so let me go ahead, do this up now. I'm not one for reading. I prefer an audio book. And I go from there. However, I am visual. Love me some TV, movies, that type of stuff. So I went, I looked at some videos from some trusted sources of mine and found out their successes and now I'm gonna try it. Okay, so, watermelon seeds. The watermelons are actually supposed to be put into a mound and then planted and it grows down and et cetera, et cetera, amen. But I'm hard-headed, like I've said before. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to put about eight seeds inside here because what I've gathered from numerous uh, sources is that they do better by not transplanting them. So that's what I'm going to try. And again, these are sugar baby. I'm going to plant eight. And then when they all start coming up, I'm going to whittle it down to just two. I think that should be sufficient for this little tub right here. And look, 
watermelon seeds that look like watermelon seeds. Look at the odds. Okay, so I'm gonna take the seeds and these, according to the packaging and others, some have said half an inch, some have said three quarter inch, some have said a whole inch. This package says half an inch. So I'm gonna split the baby and I'm gonna go with three quarter inch, which is just past that split on my finger. So I'm just gonna put in the hole. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops, did I go in there? Nope, it didn't even make it. All right, and eight. Okay, so the rest of these I'm gonna put back inside here and Maybe I'll decide to plant another little section with watermelon. We'll see. Yeah, it is South Florida, zone 10B, and the majority of the year, our soil is above 70 degrees. So I got a lot of time to, to grow these things that take 80 days to grow. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead, cover them back over. And then we're going to water it. Now I'm gonna test and see just how far down we've gotten the water. I know for a fact I didn't get all the way to the bottom, but yep, I at least got down to the point where the seeds are. Now, I'm gonna take put my little stakes where the seeds were. Now, why am I doing this? It's basically because there were weeds in here once before. There'll be weeds probably once again before these even begin to germinate or at the same time. So what I'm doing is putting a marker to let me know where the seeds were placed so I have a good idea of what I can and cannot pull. Never grown watermelon before. This is the first time, don't even know what it's supposed to look like. So. Let me give myself a helping hand. All right, and that's it. There you go. So I'll keep you updated as things come along. We'll do other little clips and so forth. And hopefully in the next 80 to 90 days, we'll have some nice sized watermelons that we can go ahead and begin to eat. And I'll show you how I do uh, the watermelon salad and then I do pickled watermelon and then I do pickled watermelon rind which is absolutely fantastic it's almost like a ginger gingered candy so throw nothing away and then this year I've decided that hey if they can dry seeds and use them then I can dry seeds and use them so some of the seeds we get this year I'm gonna take and let them dry and then use them for my own planting again so thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time on backyard to table bye